Do you know what is stream trap piping design? If not, this video will help you to understand what it is. Stream trap piping is one of the most commonly used piping system across the world in most of the industries. Industries such as oil and gas, petrochemicals, refineries, beverages and power plants and pharmaceutical sectors and glass manufacturing industries and FMCG plants as well. So this is one of the most widely used piping system across the world in most industries. So it's really important to understand the concept of it. Moreover, being a piping design engineer, imagine a situation where you are in an interview and you were asked to brief about the design requirements of stream trap piping but you don't have any idea about it. How it feels to you? So isn't it important to understand the basic requirements of the most commonly used piping across the world? So let's dive into the subject without wasting your time. Let's begin. Steam tram piping design. What is it about? It is nothing but a minimum piping design requirements to construct steam trap piping for efficient operation. Efficient operation is one of the major requirement why there is a specific design requirements for steam trap piping. Let's understand more about it. Steam trap piping is a part of a steam piping network which is considered as a utility piping in all process and non-process plant. This is what I have explained in the beginning of the video. Steam trap piping is one of the most widely used piping across industries. It is not only used in oil and gas or refineries. It is also used in FMCG plants, glass manufacturing plants and farmers and power plants. So that's why it is considered as one of the most widely used piping. And generally, the steam piping network that comes under utility piping, that is what I have highlighted over here. Let's understand how steam piping works, the steam piping network. So I'm going to show you the steam network schematic over here. Generally, you will find a heater, a boiler, and boiler will have a feed of water from any water source. And through the heat that is being produced from the heater, the boiler will generate a steam. And it will go to the steam header, and from there, the distributions will go to the respective equipments. So once the steam pro the requirements are done, it will lose its tendency and slowly it will turn to a condensate and the condensate will be collected in the condensate header and then from there it will be sent to the condensate drum where you will find the, the full of condensate. Before going to the next slide, let me just show you Pemidaka is not only the YouTube channel that provides a lot of information about piping design, it also provides a design based skills basically. You can go to the Pemidaka website and go to course tab, you will be able to find three courses PNID, support and routing. These three courses are considered to be the primary design skills required for any piping design engineers and these courses will intend to develop a particular skill. For example, PNID will develop the PNID skill and support will develop the support skill and routing will develop the routing scale actually for more details you can get into this courses and you will be able to find the full details over here you can also watch the preview video from here and if you still have any query you can give me a call over this number I have given my contact number over here this is my contact number you can message me and we will have a chat in order to clear all your queries let's understand about stream trap piping design where it is used and how it is used Generally in a steam header, you will find a condensate that needs to be diverted to the condensate header. But you simply cannot construct any line without any basis. You need to understand the concept, only then you will be able to achieve the requirements. So let's understand the concept. In a steam header, you will find a steam at high temperature. But over a period of time, after going through multiple process, the steam gets cooled down and it will become a condensate. These condensate will also travel along with the steam and it will keep on hitting every elbows and fittings which will cause a vibration in the piping. So that's one of the reason why it needs to be removed immediately in order to allow only the steam in the steam uh, header. So condensation of the steam which is in the gas form generates the condensate which is will be in a liquid form and causes slug impact and heavy vibration in the piping. So it's really important to remove the condensate immediately so that you will not have any vibration impact or slubbing impact in the piping. The steam trap piping is to allow the condensate to drain and to prevent the steam leaks. It does both the functions. Both the functions which are one is to drain the condensate and another one is to prevent the steam leaks. But do you think is it possible for a piping to do two different functions at the same time? No, it is not possible for a piping alone. So that's why one of the component is used that component name is steam trap basically the primary function is to auto drain and to prevent the steam leaks so that are done basically by the steam traps now let's understand about the steam trap this is what the steam trap looks like it will have an inlet and it will have an outlet 
the condensate from the steam header that goes to the steam trap and when the steam trap is filled with the condensate it will allow the condensate to pass through so this is the basic function you will be able to find more details in the google by checking different types and the primary functions of the steam trap but as far as this video is concerned let's focus on the piping part actually so the purpose of the steam trap is to do a duty to discharge the condensate air and other incondensable gases from a steam system while not permitting the escape of live steam so this is one of the primary duty of the steam trap it will allow the condensate to drain but it will not allow the steam to pass through it will prevent the escaping of the steam from the piping system now let's see the piping arrangement of the steam trap generally we have two types one is open loops and another one is a closed loop type this is the open loop type the open loop type will have the set of arrangements that is a little bit different than the closed to loop type but let's understand this requirement this is the typical piping requirement for a open loop type from the steam header you need to provide a drip leg this drip leg will have a drain and from the drip leg you will have you will take a line which will have an isolation over here and then it will be dropped down and again you will have a drain over here and then it will be laid down with an another isolation and the this is a strainer and then you will have a steam traps and then you will have a drain and then you will have an isolation and then it goes to the trench why it is known as a open loop because from the steam header it goes to the trench so if it goes back to this condensate header that is known as closed to loop system here certain things you need to understand you i have given a legend over here so that's why i have not given names over here so this symbol indicates a gate valve this indicates a strainer this indicates a union why there is a union at both side of the steam trap that is because so in case the steam trap needs to be removed actually you can use the union so that you can easily remove it you will be able to find the functions of the union from a lot of materials in the google the purpose of the union is that you don't have to dismantle the rest of the piping which is at the downstream and the upstream so that is why the unions are installed so in case of all the steam trap piping you need to provide a union for the uh, upstream and the downstream of the steam traps and moreover ensure that your steam trap has an upstream drain and as well as a downstream drain here in upstream you have a drain along with the strainer so you don't have to provide separately but at the downstream you have a separate drain which will help you to remove the condensate from the line in case the steam trap needs to be removed basically so here and another requirement is that you can see one isolation valve over here and one isolation valve over here in case if the entire distance in the real field condition is less this height if it is far less less than i would say if it is uh, somewhere which is less than 2 meters you don't have to have two isolation valves or we can put it in this way if this valves are accessible from the grate you don't require two isolation valves you can only go with the one isolation valve but this is the typical example for the open system and this item is known as drip plug which is nothing but a pipe and a cap over here basically rest of all items are standard items so now let's go to the closed to loop system this is how the closed to loop system works so in a closed to loop system there are little bit differences are there compared to the open loop system generally in a closed to loop system the line goes back to the condensate header but in open loop system it goes to the uh, trench but here there is a catch here there is a separate component which is a check valve is installed before the isolation you know why it is because this is to protect the back flow from the line let's say for an example in a closed loop system the condensate flows from here and if in case if there is no check valve it will go back and it will come back right so in order to protect this back flow the check valves are provided over here so the what check valve does it will not allow the flow from the opposite direction so once the condensate passes through it will be pumped into the condensate header so that is how this works this also requires a drip leg and it also requires a strainer it also requires a union on both side of the steam traps and it also requires a drain and it also requires an isolation valve all the legends are given over here this is the typical example of the open loop and the closed loop so you can uh, see these pipings are predominantly available in most of the in industries generally most of the steam traps will be lesser than constructed less than uh, somewhere around 2 inch and less basically and for sizes 
for 2 inch and above also it, the same uh, philosophy can be applied but provided you have the dismantling of this particular items basically. So here the steam traps will be uh, sized by the process team and they will provide an input for uh, mechanical engineers and mechanical engineers will procure the steam trap. So this is the, the major difference between the closed loops and the open loop. So this is the fundamental piping design requirement for any steam trap piping design. Hope this video has helped you to understand the design requirements of steam trap piping. I will meet you with another fantastic video. Until then bye from Subhash Chandran. Thank you so much for watching my video.